Hi everyone, today we're gonna to look at a technique for sharing code between notebooks and even between uh, workspaces within Microsoft Fabric. So the use case here is that maybe we have some code that we just use over and over and over. Um, and the example I'm gonna give you today is pulling a secret out of Azure Key Vault. Uh, it's something that you know I do a lot at the top of a notebook and it just doesn't make sense to paste that into every notebook where that kind of code is being used. Um, so I wanna move that into a library that I can just use wherever I want with just a couple lines of code. So uh, the scenario I'm gonna use today is I have a typical medallion architecture. So I have bronze, silver, and gold, and I want to just uh, make a shared library that, that any of these workspaces can use in any notebook with just a couple lines. So um, the way I'm gonna do that is um, generate a library. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code, but you could use any Python editor you want. Create a wheel library that I'll upload into one of the lake houses. Um, I'll put it in bronze. And then I'll create shortcuts from the other workspaces so that uh, when I do update the library, I only have to maintain it in one place. So um, let's go ahead and get in the solution. So before we start building the library, let me just show you what I'm doing right now. So this will be my before situation. So in uh, in the in the before, I have a cell that says, is calling uh, some uh, some some routines that are provided by Fabric to call in MS Spark Utils credential get token key vault, and then it gets the service key. So it's not a lot of code, but it's a little complicated and it doesn't make sense to paste this in everywhere. So what I really want to get to is this last cell. So if I kind of move this to the top, I really want to replace this code with this code so that I am just installing a library that I create maintain in one uh, lake house. And, and then I just import this, this function I'm going to write called key vault utils uh, dot get key vault secret. And I'll give it the same thing. So I'm giving it a key vault name and a key and it'll pull that out and I can use it from there. So I'm going to, and you know, we'll run this and, and just see how this works right now. Uh, essentially what I'm going to do is, uh, run run this, get the, the key, and then in this next cell down here, I'm going to look and see how long that key is. It's not possible to look at the actual secret within the notebook, thankfully, but I can see how that it was retrieved and how long it is. So if I run the second cell, it'll tell me that that's a 32 character length key. So that's fine. That at least validates that I'm getting the key. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, though, is I want to replace this code. So the, what we'll do is create a Python wheel library for that. So a wheel library is it's just a Python lib um, um, file that contains some uh, some modules. And in this case, we're, we're going to start really easy and just create one module with one function that does exactly this. Let me kind of put this side by side so you can see both. And a wheel library is contained of there's a setup that uh, Python uses to build the library, and then there's the content of the library. So the content is in this folder, shared utils. And if you look at my kind of after cell, you can see that shared utils is going to be the name of the library. And then what I want to call is a function called get key vault secret, which is in a module called key vault utils. So if I open up this, I have key vault utils, that'll become a module. The function is what we'll write in here. The init has to be here just to tell uh, Python that this is a module. Um, I'm not actually going to put anything in this file. It's just there as kind of a marker. So let's write that function. So the, the function get key secret essentially does this, right? So let me go and I have a copy of that over here that I pre-wrote, but I'll paste it in and show you how it works. So this is key vault utils. That's going to be the module. There's the function. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And if you look kind of left and right, okay, it's doing the same thing. All that's really been added is a function signature. So it's gonna become a function that returns the secret. Um, and instead of calling it OpenAI services key, I genericized it and said, hey, that's just secret. So the secret is gonna come out of key vault, whichever secret the user, the caller is asking for in whatever vault that they're asking for it to be from. So that's, that's it. So that is saved and it doesn't need anything. And setup is used to let Python know how to build a library from this, uh, the code that we wrote. So I'm going to paste that in here and then we can look at it. So just what the comment says here, setup creates the wheel file that we then upload to fabric. And 
here's a command we run in Python to actually build the uh, the wheel library. So there's a wheel there's a wheel dependency that uh, that knows how to take this function call and create a shared utils uh, library with the version that we give it. So let's call that we'll call it version 1.0.0. We'll assume this is going to work and it's ready to release. Uh, as a description and this is just pretty boilerplate down here. So let's go ahead and run that. A bunch of things happen down here. You can read this if you want. The important part is at the end of the process in the distribution folder, we get this WHL file. So essentially it's a zip file with various code and metadata in it. But that's the thing that we actually want. So I'm going to reveal that in Finder and I'm going to copy that to my desktop. If I can find my desktop. Where's my desktop? There it is. So if I look at my desktop, date modified, the thing on the top is shared utils 100. So it's shared utils, name of the library, 100 is the version we name we gave it. It's Python 3. None any means this will run on any Python really. It doesn't, it's not specific to a PC or a Mac or Linux. It, it'll run anywhere Python runs. So that is done. Now we can start using this thing. So let's give it a try. So uh, and essentially we're um, when it comes to Fabric, we're we're using this technique, and Microsoft documents it a little bit, but they don't really walk you through how to do 100% of it. But it's managed Python libraries in Fabric, so this is a supported feature. Um, there are a lot of information about pulling in um, public libraries and so on. The technique we're using is the one at the very end called Manage Custom Python Libraries Through Inline Installation. And you can see here they're giving you an example of what that pip install looks like. Um, and it tells you to upload to a wheel library. This is this is what we're going to do. But let's actually do it ourselves. So we'll come over here. Now what we're going to want to do is go into um, into our lake house. And let me refresh this because I think this yeah that has some leftover stuff from a previous test. So here's our files where we're actually going to put this. I'm going to create a subfolder for this because I think that would be more organized. So I'm going to call this shared code. Now, initially, I'm going to use this in bronze, but I'm going to create shortcuts back to this from other lake houses, um, which we'll do in just a second. But this is good. so that's what's going to make the shared code. So it's shared among the notebooks in this in this uh, workspace. It's also potentially shared to other workspaces and other lake houses. And I'll show you an example of that real quick. But let's go ahead and upload the file. So this is very simple. Um, we just need to upload the wheel file. So there's the 100 wheel file that we just created. And let's upload that. Clear all those messages. Click, click. There's our library. So our library is in the lake house. Now let's go back to the notebook. So here's the notebook. Um, here's the cell we no longer want. So we'll get rid of that. So now instead of all of that code, we just have one line that installs a library from the lake house and then imports the module. The key vault utils and then calls get key vault secret and when we run the cell here we should see that we're still going to get that 32 byte uh, key so let me clear that output let's go ahead and run this it's gonna you'll see the pip install first and then it will make the call so if uh, i once you install pip install you don't have to do that again you do that once and then you can call these routines over and over and over Oops, actually I made a mistake. Okay, so here's the mistake I made. If I go and actually look at the uh, the file section, I do refresh, and I look at shared code. Um, that file, the file I'm calling for here doesn't actually exist, does it? So let me just delete that. And then this is actually good instruction anyway. So copy file API path, that will give you the exact file of that library right there. So let's try that one more time. And this will do the pip install and it will go ahead and make the call and get the key. So we should actually see it reference making this call too. Okay, so it ins installed collected packages, successfully uninstalled. Oh, I had an older version. So it successfully installed the version that we just created. And um, it's a new pip is available. Um, that's in Microsoft's VMs, so or in their compute. So I'm not really too concerned about that. 
And then um, here I have got a secret with 32 bytes of length. So that's a good sign. So it actually ran. Um, if I look at the code in um, that we wrote, I, I did put a print line in here. Got a secret with length, bytes length. So that actually showed up. So I can see the routine actually ran. And then if I wanted to do sort of a second test here in the notebook to look at the key that was pulled, it's 32 characters. So um, so that's it. I mean, that worked. Now from here, of course, we could continue to go and write our, our open AI code to use the key and do the LLM stuff that we were planning to do. And in any other notebook, we just paste this in, this cell in to get the, um, the key that we need for whatever we're doing in other notebooks. Um, so that kind of takes care of that scenario. Um, any notebook within this lake house or that's attached to this lake house could just go ahead and pull that shared code module. Now let's look at sort of a, the follow on is, well, what if I want to use this in silver or gold or just any of these other workspaces that I have that have their own lake houses? So silver has its own lake house. And the approach I'm going to take here is actually to, let me refresh that. Yeah, so the approach I'm going to take is actually to create a, a shortcut back to the bronze version of the file. So rather than, you know, I could, if I wanted to, I could upload that wheel file into this lake house as well. But then I've got to make sure to remember to do that every time I'm, you know, uploading into a new um, uh, workspace that has a lake house. I can do that. But what I can do instead is to create a shortcut to it. So if I just, I rec if I click on files, new shortcut, I'll choose one lake as the type of shortcut. I uploaded it to bronze already, so I'll just shortcut over to that file in uh, bronze. And actually, I'm going to shortcut to the whole folder. So if if more shared code gets uploaded to the bronze shared folder, uh, then that'll also be visible in the Silver Lake House. So here's you can kind of see the, the link little icon. So this is going to be a link to shared code in another lake house. That's done. So now I have the shared code here. And if I look, it's right there. So now if I go into a notebook in the silver, and oh, I'll just create a new notebook. So if I create a new notebook in silver, and I'm going to attach that, you know, I could attach it to another lake house, but um, by convention, you know, I'm using the silver notebooks with silver lake house. So I'm attached to the silver lake house, and I can see the shared code here. So if I wanted to um, go ahead and um, import that library here I could do it and you see it's not even refer you know it's it's just in the local lake house that we're connected to so the notebook doesn't really know that that code is actually in bronze um, the shortcut is getting it there so that's pretty much it um, that's how we can centralize our code into shared libraries and, um, and and put them into a lake house and now if I want to change those routines in the future I just can update the routines I have in Visual Studio Code rebuild a new version of the library upload it and then as notebooks, you know, I can migrate notebooks to new versions of the library from there, but I don't have to duplicate that code um, in from notebook to notebook or even from workspace to workspace or lakehouse to lakehouse. So I hope that was interesting or, or at least that you learned something and I'll see you next time.